Uh, so most of you have probably heard uh, the saying that there's only two things in life that are certain, um, death and taxes. And I realize it's sort of a bold move for an archaeologist to get up in front of a room of early American historians and butcher a Benjamin Franklin quote. Um, but I hope you'll forgive me for that, and I hope you'll forgive me for being even a little bit bolder and saying that I think Benjamin Franklin missed another of life's certainties, which is the fact of garbage. And uh, garbage is something that we don't really talk about very much or think about very much. And actually, today, we spend a lot of our time and resources and efforts really trying to not have to think about our trash, right? We've put a lot of uh, energy into sort of making it go away as efficiently as possible. It goes down the toilet, down the drain, out on the curb, and you never see it again. But what I want to do with my 10 minutes is um, to, as Neil said, talk a little trash and uh, focus on garbage and some of the meanings that we can kind of get from that, um, both now and in the past. So I'm going to start a little bit closer to home and start with some modern examples, and then we'll go back to the ancient Maya where it's a little more distant. Um, so first of all, the first key point about garbage is that garbage is sort of a relative concept, right? Nothing is inherently trash, but everything could eventually become trash. And this is something that we know well uh, from another familiar saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure, not Benjamin Franklin. Uh, but also that, uh, you know, things go through cycles of value and, and being worthwhile or being worth something. So we see this in terms of things that, you know, start off as being uh, popular, then they become sort of obsolete, then they become vintage, then they become heirlooms, and all of a sudden, again, they have a lot of value. So that's the first key point, that, that garbage is, is a relative category, that we have things that are not trash, and then trash is everything that's not in the not trash category. Then the second key point is that that system that helps us define trash as this relative entity uh, gives us an idea of some broader cultural and social systems. So this is something that, that anthropologist Mary Douglas said a long time ago, that uh, you know, shoes aren't inherently dirty, but if we put the shoes on the dining room table, that's dirty. Food's not a dirty thing, but if we have food on our clothes or under our beds, then it's dirty. And in looking at these places where things are sort of outside the system, so things like dirt and things like trash, is when we can start to see where the limits of the system are and understand the way that we're sort of structuring the world between what is good and bad, what is dirty and clean. Um, also, the third thing is that that act of, of making that system is sort of a positive thing for us to do. So when we take uh, what Mary Douglas called matter out of place, when we take the, the food and wash it off of our clothes or take it out from under the bed, or when we take the shoes off the table and put them back where they belong, that's sort of a positive way for us to get the material world to sort of align with the way that we want to see it. And we also see that uh, that kind of act of making things fit into the system helps us define the kind of people that we are because we are part of this system that we're creating for the world, right? So, um, show of hands, how many of you recycle? It's a useless question because who's going to say I don't recycle? <laughs> uh, and the reason for that is that, especially for today, we're sort of in a moment where our relationship to trash has this kind of moral uh, side to it. And it's all tied into environmental awareness, it's tied into our natural resources and how they're diminishing. And so, no one's going to raise their hand and say, well, I, I don't recycle, I throw my plastic away. Because today, it has this sort of moral connotation to it, right? And so these are just sort of the ways that, that trash is something that, even though we don't look at it directly a lot of the time, we can see how it leads us into sort of better understandings of how people are expected to act in society and be members of uh, this kind of social and cultural system that we develop. So then, of course, the question is, how do we get at that for the ancient Maya? Because that's what I'm interested in as an archaeologist. And um, the reason that I, I came to the JCB was to sort of try to figure out how the Maya talked about trash. So I wanted to look at dictionary sources and get a sense of the way that the Maya are actually talking about trash, um, which is sort of a problem because they don't do that. Um, but what they do do is talk about um, related concepts that aren't actually trash, but are sort of the ways that people interact with objects that make them garbage. So we don't have a word, or we, 
the Maya don't have a word for trash in the way that we talk about trash. There's no sort of abstract category of things that are not other things, but are garbage. What there are are phrases for uh, sweeping things up into piles, sweeping them out of the house, burning them, burning down the agricultural debris. There's words that are sort of entwined with human action rather than this kind of abstract category. So a good example of that is the words that are glossed in Spanish as trash in a lot of Mayan languages involve the word mis, which is the word, a root word for sweeping that goes back um, far into a lot of Mayan languages and has uh, their glyphic representations of it in uh, classic period document, documents. Um, so what that tells us is that the kinds of objects that we look at as archaeologists when we find them grouped together in a certain way, it's not necessarily that we're looking at um, something that's been moved aside and discarded as efficiently as possible, the way that we would think of it now, but that it's something that's the result of a very kind of intentional action by somebody in the past. And for the Maya, and actually for uh, Mesoamerican peoples in general, this act of sweeping has several sort of connotations to it. So it is used to sort of clean out your house and sweep your floors clean, but sweeping is also um, an important means of purification. So before certain ritual ceremonies, um, priests had to sweep the roads of, of towns clean. They had to sweep out temples. Before baptisms in colonial period times, patios had to be swept clean and uh, fresh leaves laid down. And sweeping um, in, in north of the Maya region in central Mexico, you know, Sahagún lists sweeping as uh, one of the rites that Aztec women perform on a daily basis as a sort of a, a kind of offering. Um, so what this means for archaeology, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm a baby PhD. So, <laughs> um, but I think what it means is that it gives us an opportunity to ask different questions of the kinds of, of evidence that we're looking at, right? So one of the things that we tend to do in archaeology is to go straight for the places where we think we're going to find a trash pit, usually off the back of a household or something like that. And the reason we do that is it's usually that we find a lot of objects there, right? But then what we do with the objects is we take potsherds and we imagine what kind of vessel they might have come from and we reconstruct the vessel and make a drawing that shows what kind of form it might have had and so what kind of function it might have served. And same thing with animal bones. We find a bone and we talk about you know, what kind of hunting practices were done or uh, what kind of contributions to the diet certain animals made. But we never talk about what processes happened to bring those objects together and why they were put in the place that they were put. But what this tells us, what the sort of the way that the Maya themselves thought about trash tells us that that's not an accidental process, that placing things where they belong, and this is also something that comes out of just this understanding of trash as part of this system and sort of demarcating places in the world that are appropriate for garbage and, appro and not appropriate for garbage. Um, but what this tells us is that there is meaning to be found in how these things come together and also where they're eventually deposited. Um, so really it just means that we can ask some new questions as we go into um, future field work. So I guess the moral of the story is that in talking a little bit of trash, hopefully we can start to say something new. So thank you. <laughs>